Then it was time for the end of term test. Millicent announced that she was coming first, that Emily Joseph didn't know as much as she knew because she didn't have all the books that she had, and Emily's mother couldn't buy brain food for her like her mother sent from America. And there was no question in anybody's mind, of course, Millicent was going to come first. She was the prettiest, richest, luckiest, bravest, quickest, funniest, cleanest, healthiest child in the class. So naturally, she was also the brightest. She didn't even have to say so, for everybody knew. Even Emily Joseph knew. Emily Joseph wouldn't dare come higher than Millicent. Miss gave the arithmetic test first. Millicent finished long before everybody else and closed her copybook, while Emily Joseph was still writing and counting on her fingers. When we came out, Millicent boasted to her gang that she had got out all the sums in the two in two twos. In the afternoon, we had a dictation. Millicent wrote rapidly, never stopping to look at Miss. The end of term test lasted for two days, and the next day at lunchtime, Millicent gave a party for her gang to celebrate her success in the exam. She had brought apples from home and pretty paper cups with Mickey Mouse on them. She sent messengers to Miss Aggie's parlor to buy soft drinks and sweet biscuits. They had a feast, and when we hung a little distance away pretending not to notice them, but if Millicent had thrown an apple stem to us, we would have fought over it like dogs. The bell rang and we went in. Millicent's gang were rubbing their bellies and making sounds of satisfaction, and Millicent sailed in with her head in the air. When we had settled down, Miss said, test results, and everybody shouted, Ray! including Joel, who was never anywhere but last. Where to begin, Miss asked, top or bottom? There was a commotion for a while, some shouting top, top, some shouting bottom, bottom, and some even shouting middle. Then we realized that Millicent's gang was shouting top, top. So everybody shouted with them. Of course, if Miss started at the bottom of the list, Millicent would have to wait for 41 names before she heard hers, which was, of course, at the top. Okay, okay, I'll start from the top. Quiet, or I won't read them at all. She picked up the list, put on her glasses, and everybody looked at Millicent with admiration and then turned to look at Miss again. First, Emily Joseph. We jumped. Emily looked frightened. Nobody dared to look back at Millicent. Miss was reading on. Fifth, sixth, seventh, we were worried. She must have forgotten Millicent. 11th, 12th, 13th, decidedly something was wrong. By the time Miss had gotten to 13th, we were paralyzed. Nobody could move. We held our breath. 32nd, 33rd, you could have heard a pin drop. We wanted to stop Miss to make her start over again because she had skipped over Millicent's name. 39th, Farza Muhammad, 40th, Joel Prince, 41st, Millicent Hernandez. Several seconds passed before we could breathe again. Then we heard a giggle and we couldn't believe it had come from our class. But it had. Vina had her hand over her mouth and was shaking with laughter. 
She looked at Harry, a smile spread over Harry's face. He put his head down on the desk and giggled. Snickers came from different parts of the class. Miss was calmly putting away her list. The giggles and snickers grew. Soon the whole class was laughing as loudly as we had laughed the day Harry fell off the bench. Miss turned around back and cleaned the blackboard. When she had finished cleaning the blackboard, she gave us the ball and sent us outside because, she said, we were the most unruly class in the whole school and in the whole of Trinidad and Tobago. We poured out onto the savanna. Football, somebody shouted. Girls against boy, said another. Not fair, said the boys. It's 23 girls and 18 boys. Which 23? asked somebody. It's only 22 girls, let's go. It was the best football game we have ever had. Nobody won because there was so much laughing and rolling about that we forgot to keep the score. The goalposts kept falling down and Joel wet his pants. Somebody shouted, Mr. Jeremy's ball! And we scattered, screaming in all directions. And when we realized there was no bull, we laid down on the grass and laughed till we were weak. Then we tried to start the game again, but Clem grabbed the ball and ran off with it. And everybody ran after him. So he threw it to another boy and soon the game turned into sway. And when it was sway, the boys always managed to keep the ball. The girls never got a hold of it. And it was only 22 girls because Millicent was sitting in the schoolyard all by herself. End of Millicent.